this is a signal generator that I was given. It's got all the different cords on the back. Like the, uh, the cords go out through a slot in the back. But this is a signal generator. And it outputs to uh, your TV. You can generate different types of patterns. So let's uh, hook it up and see what it does. It comes with a bunch of alligator clips. Ground, green, red, and blue. This is for killing the gun for a CRT. And this one is going to be, I think, the RF output because it only has RF out. And you can kill the guns. You can kill red, green, and blue for checking individual guns itself on a color set. RF channel, three or four, and 4.5 megahertz on and off. That's for the, the audio subcarrier. And we've got just a couple of different test patterns on it. I don't even know if this thing works, but we're, we're going to take it apart. This was given to me, so we're going to take this thing apart once I hook it up. I'm just trying to debate whether I should plug it into a CRT set, because I've got one kicking around here somewhere, or whether I should just uh, hook it up to my plasma. Maybe I'll dig up a little CRT because I have a little CRT right here in the shop. A cute little one. So of course this is my little candle Ju10 International Limited 5 inch color set which I was able to snag really reasonable um, last year. Uh, channel 3. Let's just see if this thing's going to put a signal out. Maybe this, maybe this generator doesn't even work. I know the TV works. But I don't see anything on channel 3. How about channel 4? Channel 4 seems to be putting out a signal. Okay, so why is channel 3 not working? Okay, well channel 3 is not working and maybe we'll get that fixed up. There is the crosshatch generator. These tools were invaluable for doing convergence. That's what they were designed for. I had one when I worked in the, at the shop. And um, it was the shops, though I couldn't take it. And then I, this one was given to me. But uh, invaluable tool. So we've got crosshatch generator. We've got a single dot in the middle of the screen. That's for doing your static convergence. You do that with dots. Got a whole series of dots. Purity is a single color. And that's when you would turn the gun killer on and off to generate just a, a red screen. Which of course won't work for, uh, that won't work without hooking it up to the, the, the set itself. Uh, we got our, our standard static convergence dots. Single dot for centering. Crosshatch generator. You got a gate generator. Horizontal and vertical. For, this is for doing geometry and checking uh, linearity. Standard cross and then our gated rainbow. And our gated rainbow will, will generate color if I turn up the color here. Oh, there we go. That's what that is. There's our gated rainbow. Four point five megahertz on and off. With it on, it takes out the gate. Hmm. Okay. That's interesting. So here you've just got uh, red, blue, and green. Instead of the full gated rainbow, it just gives you a red, blue, and green. And if your color phase is set correctly, you should have, should be red, green, and blue, or red, blue, and green. So this appears to be working. Of course, we can turn the chroma down, so we've just got a black and white picture. And we can increase the chroma all the way to full chroma, which is actually probably over-modulating at this point. That turns on the 4.5 megahertz carrier when we're in that mode, as you can hear. But not when we're in... I guess it does as well. It turns on the 4.5 megahertz carry, but it also changes the the behavior of the gated rainbow and the RGB or yeah RBG 
pulse. Anyway, I know you guys want to see what's inside this thing, so uh, let's open it up. I got a TV analyst kicking around here somewhere too. If it does not work, but maybe we'll get it working someday. That's the one that has the flying spot. A CRT that you put a slide in front of and it uh, uses a photomultiplier too. I do have one of those. And I've never shown it to you guys. Someday we might actually get it to work. Okay, this should just pop out of the cabinet. And here is the here is the guts to this unit. Some old integrated circuits. B and K, this would have been made in the USA, of course. Dynascan Corporation, Chicago, Illinois. It's got some Elna caps in it. Modulation adjustment. Adjustments here, you can adjust the, the bar width. Let's go to the, I guess, my, is that for color bars? Is that what that one's for? Yeah, you see? You can adjust the color bar width. If I go to uh, the dot size, this one will affect the size of the dots. From nothing to a little bit bigger. It does not affect the uh, crosshatch or anything though. That I guess it does. It does affect the crosshatch size. Or turn on the sound carrier, you can see the interference from the uh, 4.5 megahertz carrier beating with the 3.58 chroma. There's the bottom of the circuit board. Some pretty long leads here, no one bothered to cut them off. Just just stuff the parts through and just solder them down and just leave the leads there. That was just the way they did it. This would have all been built by hand, I'm sure. Like everything was back in those days, they were all hand assembled. 10% tolerance resistors in here. These ones are 10% with the silver band. Gold band was 5%. I don't see any 5%ers in here. Those are five percent tolerance down here, gold band. But most of them are most of them are ten percent tolerance. An old neon lamp for the uh, power light. Now channel three wasn't working. Let's just see why. See nothing on channel three. Just channel four. Hmm, nothing at all for channel three. But just but four works fine. Anyway, that's uh, just a little quick look at the inside of this little color bar generator. It's uh, it's working. Kind of a useless piece of test equipment these days, but uh, I guess it was nice to have back in the day. We, we loved this thing for, for doing convergence. That's what we used it for, was doing convergence. We used to use one of these things all the time whenever, I, whenever we uh, changed the CRT. We had to use this to, to do the convergence on it. The inline guns were pretty simple. You just rotated the magnets around and in some cases stuck some of the little chevron magnets and the Sony's you stuck the little the, the little uh, strip magnets down around the yoke so it made them relatively simple but back in the days of the uh, the Delta gun when you had you know 20 or 30 controls for adjusting each quadrant so you see that the CRT is actually not bad for convergence for this little set so a Motorola chip here MC9819P is that one. What's this one down here? This one is a. Uh, I 
MC9819P, same. Transistor. Got a crystal over here. Yeah, this is the color oscillator, 3.58. Three point five six three nine three seven nine five. Oh, interesting. Should be three point five seven. But three point five six three seven nine five. It does change the color phase. Some of these components over here, I know it's a dual transistors or what they are. Let's see. Six leads to them. I think these might be these might be dual transistors. Or Motorola 307-006. The two seventeen. I don't know what they are. Um, I'm thinking dual transistors, but there's a bunch of them in here. I gained. You'd never see them. I don't know what this part is either. These are so obsolete. Probably the only thing they've ever been used in those devices like this. But anyway, it's kind of a, a kind of a neat old machine from way back in the early days of TV servicing, when every shop had this and other pieces of equipment, and it still works. Tested by number fourteen. Got some diodes down here. Anyway, I think uh, we've probably seen enough of this. Just wanted to show you guys the inside of one of these little color bar generators from way back in the 1960s. I guess is when this would have been around, late maybe mid to late 60s. It's solid state, so it's not super super old. If it was really old, it would be full of tubes. I'm gonna I'm gonna think that this is probably late 60s. I don't see any dates on here. Let's see if we can let's see if we can see a date. Elna, Illinois. That's an American capacitor. It's still good after all these years. I'm just wondering if there's any any date coding on here that we can see when this thing was made. Little transformer in the back. Don't see any fusing on here. Power cord right into the transformer. This goes to the power switch at the front and back. I don't see any I don't see any data manufacture on here anywhere. But it'd be interesting to know how old this unit is. Circuit boards are riveted down with rivets, so you're not pulling the board off the chassis without cutting those rivets out. That's my little color bar generator. Doesn't look as nice as my other one that generates proper color bars, but hey, it's better than nothing. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.